What do we want? Justice! That's what we do at Vocal. We keep going. <laughs> so first, welcome everyone. Thank you all for coming out today. And we need to be very clear on why we are here today. So I'm going to read the statement put out by Vocal New York, a statewide organization comprised of lived and credentialed experts and being that we are statewide, and being who our members are made up of, we are more than qualified to speak on statewide issues. That's right. That's right. And we are here for unfinished. Business. Unfinished. Business. Unfinished. Business. The New York State Legislature has unfinished business. The recent passage of the New York State budget saw many major victories for New Yorkers, thanks to a weakened Governor Cuomo and a movement determined to win transformational change. Someone say transformational change. Yes. But in that transformational change, many people were left behind. Too many. The budget provided no meaningful relief to over 92 thousand New Yorkers that ain't right. living in shelters and on the streets across this state. That ain't right. It did not make a critical investment to reverse record high overdose deaths. That ain't right. And as this legislative session begins, we must address the injustices occurring in our prisons and jails. We must address the 92,000 New Yorkers who are living in shelters and on the streets. We must address the needs and the predictions say that the worst year on record in United States history will be around overdose deaths. That ain't right. That ain't right. Our New York State Legislature must stand up to Governor Cuomo. They must stand up to Governor Cuomo and use their veto-proof majorities to pass critical interventions that were left out of the budget. Stand up now! Yes, and so today, Vocal New York, a statewide organization, has come here with statewide representation. That's right. We are from the Capital Region. That's right! Yes! We are from Western New York. Yes. Yes. We have come from New York City. Yes. yes. And we are standing in solidarity with our legislative allies. <laughs> and we are standing here to demand that New York State finish its business. Do the right thing. And the, the time right thing. for doing that is now. The clock has started ticking. We need to finish the business of the housing crisis and make strides to end homelessness and house the homeless. Someone say legislate the Housing Access Voucher Program. Someone say HAVP. And having a voucher program that will eliminate barriers and house the homeless is a start. But we need housing units to link them to. We need to house our neighbors with Dignity Act. Someone say Honda. Honda. Someone say Honda. Honda. So here to validate the need for housing in Western New York, in New York City, and in other jurisdictions across the state that we represent are our lived experience experts, Milton Perez and Cedric Cotton. Uh, 
greetings. My name is Milton Perez. I'm a native of the Bronx, Puerto Rico. I've oh, been in the wow. shelter system over five years. That uh, ain't right. It's not right. Uh, in Brooklyn, mostly. Um, first of all, I like to say uh, homes for the homeless. I think that's the only solution that uh, that could uh, keep, move us forward in, uh, in this problem that's been go ongoing for decades now. HABP is a real uh, key to provide a, a pathway to, to actual housing. The, the vouchers that are in, in place now, city feps, if you're in, in New York City, is inadequate. You know, uh, it's, it's not a, very few people actually get housing with the vouchers that are in place now because they're not fully funded. That's you right. can't get an apartment with the money that's provided uh, with those vouchers. So that's why we're here to ask the, 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 uh, the state government to uh, uh, push forward on HABP -H and also Honda, which is another pathway to, to housing, building actual low income housing. Um, in my years in, in, in the shelter, uh, I just see it as a big, big, big business, excuse me. Uh, we just, as us, us the, the, the homeless, the, the clients in this big business are always in the wrong. We're always lied to and lied about. And basically, we just grease to the wheel. This is a multi-billion dollar business. And the only way that I, that I, that I, I believe it could be uh, uh, stopped or uh, engaged in a positive manner is for the, the people that provide the funding, the, the government to actually, you know, uh, do what they're not doing, actually provide uh, a voucher that will help people pay their rent. Uh, and and uh, so the last thing I like to say is home for the homeless. Thank you so much. Hi, my name is Cedric Cotton, vocal leader of Rochester, New York. Being homeless was hard for me because I had mental issues. I w went to social service, wasn't able to get assistance. Went to the House of Mercy, wasn't able to stay there because, it, because there wasn't enough room. I wasn't able to get housing because either my credit score wasn't high enough or my, I didn't have enough money. Well, and, the, and I had to find, it, was, it wasn't safe on the streets. I had to find places to stay at night, like park benches, garages, um, subways, whatever, whatever, whatever was dry, and, and and it wasn't safe for me in the streets. Um, HAVP, I think, is better for people because it makes if HAVP have, housing access voucher program will make will make homeless people priorities. I should have been somebody priority. Um, and and and, and it's, it's it's not a lot of housing in Rochester, New York. It's higher, it's, it's higher, and it's it's basically for middle class people. And HAVP. Is 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 is, is, a, is a program that I think y'all should continue, and um, the hundred dollar, hundred million dollars, hundred million dollars given to SSI, SSI, um, DSS. I, I don't, I don't, I don't qualify them for them programs. HAVP, HAVP, housing access voucher program. Thank you. All right, we're gonna keep this moving. And now we are gonna hear from a friend and ally of Vocal New York, our statewide deputy majority leader, Senator Gianaris. Thank you, good morning everybody, good morning. And thank you to the activists from Vocal for being here today from all over the state. I came up from Queens, New York today. Uh, to be here and legislate and continue our work because you heard about the budget. The budget was historic this year. We taxed the rich this year and we paid for things like our schools, we paid for our mass transit, we paid for excluded workers to get benefits. But what did we do on housing? Not enough. Not enough. We did set aside some money. We have a hundred million dollars for what will hopefully become Honda by the time we're done. But we did not establish the program. We have until June 10th, that is when our session ends, and we have some great champions here. You're going to hear from Senator Kavanaugh, who chairs our housing committee in the Senate and does great work. Senator Rivera is here as well, and we have a lot more allies in the building who are going to be uh, in, in the Senate chamber and remotely today to try and get this work done. We have a housing crisis like we've never had before in New York. 
It has been the case for decades. It is worse now because of the pandemic. People who can't pay their rent, people who have been put out on the streets. Talk about it. We need to make sure that people have somewhere to live, and that's not just for their own benefit, but that's for everybody's benefit. For every New Yorker. Because when these people have homes, when these people have resources, they're shopping in the stores. They're doing all the things that keep the economy moving. They are New York, and we need to stand up for them and make sure we provide the human right that is housing for all these folks. And we're not going to stop until we get it done. June 10th is the end of session. It's got to be done before then, and we're committed to getting it done. Thank you all very much. Now we're going to bring up um, a guy who actually just became my friend and who we can always reach out and speak to by phone. We're going to call up the sponsor of HAVP, Senator Kavanaugh. Thank you very much. It's great to be here. I also I want to say I love the ambitious chance, you know, legislate the housing access voucher program is quite a mouthful. Uh, yes, it is. But it, but it is it is what we need to do today. You know, as as has been said, there were many, many very big steps we took in this budget, many of them historic and even on housing. We have taken steps to make sure that people stay in their homes in spite of the COVID-19 pandemic. We have a $2.4 billion rental assistance program that we're pushing the state to get up and running as soon as possible that was enacted in the budget. We are in the next couple of days extending the eviction moratorium, the foreclosure moratorium, that's foreclosures of taxes, foreclosures of mortgages, all the ways people's homes might be threatened. We are blocking. And yet, we know that we have a homelessness crisis. And we don't just have a homeless crisis that is recent. We don't just have a homelessness crisis that has come from COVID-19. We know for years and years and years, this state has failed to invest in making sure that there is affordable, permanent, secure housing for people who are homeless. And that ain't right. Now, homelessness is a complicated thing, right? We know there are other services needed. We are working on making sure other services are available and other resources to support people. But at the end of the day, if you don't have a stable place to live, you are not gonna be out of crisis. You are not gonna be able to participate in the other parts of the economy. You are not getting the rights that every person in our society ought to have, uh, ought to have protected. So we're very committed to, to passing the Housing Access Voucher Program. We're very committed to expanding that program over the years until this state is doing what we need to do to end homelessness. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Senators. So what you just heard about Honda and HAVP, that is the vocal New York platform as it relates to housing. But there are so many other human rights issues. One of them is related to our users union. As we mentioned that the number of lives lost across this United States of America has, Im has been impacted by this overdose crisis. Someone say overdose crisis. Someone say overdose crisis. Yes, and here to speak on behalf of our 2021 platform as it relates to ending the drug war. Someone say ending the drug war. Someone say ending the drug war. Yes, we are going to hear from our lived experienced experts from Vocal New York's Users Union to speak to our 2021 platform around ending the drug war. Casey and Asia. Good morning. My name is Casey Hayner and I am a person in long-term um, remission from opioid dependency. Um, I'm a leader in our users union as well as our Albany chapter. I've lived in um, Saratoga County my entire life. Um, I'm very disappointed and angry at the outcome of the budget and its failure to provide meaningful relief to 
over 92,000 homeless New Yorkers in failing to adequately address this overdose crisis. The legislator decided, the legislation decided to choose this, to pass this budget, knowing we are in a historic overdose crisis without addressing anything, in addressing the overdose crisis that's happening. They need, they refuse to pass bills that are life-saving, like decriminalizing syringes. I'm a person, a former IV drug user, and I live in a semi-rural area. When I was using, I was forced to reuse syringes over and over again because I was not able to access adequate number when I got to the pharmacy, when I could get to the pharmacy. You're limited to 10 syringes. Where I live, the pharmacy doesn't even have to give them to you. So you don't know when you're going to get to get clean syringes again. I almost lost my arm. I had numerous abscesses, and I'm lucky to be alive today. Thousands of New Yorkers are dying from being disbarred from these life-saving public health tools. This is a free bill. It will save lives. And it's even more crucial because we're seeing hepatitis C and HIV clusters pop up all over across the state. We must end this life-threatening overdose crisis before it's too late, and this is one of the essential ways to do it. I demand the legislator shows its commitment to saving and improving the lives of vulnerable New Yorkers by finally passing this bill that we have been working for for over a decade. Thank you. And I want to speak a little bit about Matt imprisoned, okay? Just because a person is in jail does not mean that they should not be treated with respect and decency. That's right. Okay? 30 years ago when I was in jail, I had to quit cold turkey. There was nothing offered to me. Why is it 30 years later a person in jail cannot have medical assisted treatment in prison? Our ask is that anyone in the prison program be allowed MAT whenever they ask for it. Right. We're asking that from the moment that they ask until they are released from prison, that, they, that this service is ongoing, and that, that when they are released from prison, that the link in Shakir is there. Right. Just because a person in jail does not mean that they cannot be treated with respect indecency. It's bad enough that they're being warehoused like a bunch of cattle already. Let me back off over that one. But listen, every life deserves to be treated with respect and decency. I know firsthand what it is to be behind bars having, quit, having to quit cold turkey. And honey, it ain't a good look. So it's time to think about those people behind bars. It's time to treat them with respect and decency. And it's time to get them the medical assistance treatment they need to be able to go on in their lives. Thank you. Vocal New York is extremely committed to ending the drug war, which we know to really be a war on people. And our drug policy coordinator, Jasmine, has put together an End Overdose New York Coalition. And on that coalition, our service for pro providers showing up from across New York State in different cities. And during those calls, we often hear the name of our next friend and ally who is going to speak. His name is mentioned when we talk about ending the drug war, when we talk about MAT in jails and prisons, when we talk about decriminalizing syringes, we look to this champion and he always shows up for us. I give to you Senator Rivera. Good morning. Good morning. Addiction is not a moral failing. I'll repeat that again. Addiction is not a moral failing but yet we treat it like it. And policy that has been in this state and across the nation 
starts apparently from that place of stigma. Not apparently. It does. Obviously <laughs> starts from that place of stigma. Yep. And there's much that we have done in the last couple of years, and I thank the brothers and sisters behind me who have been some of the folks who have educated me on this issue. But we still have much more to do. And one thing that we can do this year, which is a no-brainer, is to decriminalize syringes. Talk about it! Simply, simply put, this is something that is a continuation of a project, of a process that already exists. Harm reduction works. Harm reduction saves lives. So the idea of providing non-criminalizing to, to decriminalizing syringes is a no-brainer, and I'm going to work doubly hard to make sure that we get it done this year. Yeah. We're going to make sure that we get it done this year. And very quickly, I will also mention another bill, which I know is one of the things that we care that that we care about deeply, and that is fair and timely parole. Oh, that's right. We have spoken about this before, but it's the idea that if somebody is in prison, if somebody has been incarcerated and has fulfilled the responsibility, has accepted responsibility, has fulfilled the, uh, the, the, the time that they were supposed to spend in jail, then we should allow these folks to come back to our communities. The, the fact that they will, the old, older folks do not recidivate. Older folks need to be come back to prison. And if you have paid your debt to society, you're supposed to be able to come back. And we want to make sure that we can do that. But these are just some of the things that we can do. I will tell you, I will commit myself, recommit myself to working along with my sisters and brothers in vocal. I've missed you folks over here, by the way. I've missed you folks. Can't wait till we open up the building back again so we can hear the echoes inside our capital of our vocal brothers and sisters who are so vocal and loud and I love it. Thank you so much for being here. <laughs> Spoken in true vocal fashion. To conclude this portion as it relates to ending the drug war, I'd like to bring up someone I am certainly one of his biggest fans because he is certainly the expert around ending the drug war. He has lived this. Come on up, Terrell. Um, my name is Sorrell Jones, manager for um, outreach, community outreach for New York Home Industrial Educators, Wasside Corner Project. I'm tired. I'm tired of sitting here watching people in my community die from overdoses unintentionally for the last 40 years. I've been doing this work in harm reduction for 10 years. And I don't know how many countless lives I have saved because I have to walk around with naloxone. I got mine. I got mine. It's a shame that when we started this crisis, and I'm going to keep it real, when you hit the white community, it was a problem. But when you hit my community, nothing was done. Right. And still today, still today, my community is crying, crying for help. Crying and dying and we're not getting nothing. It's a shame that this bill overlooked my community again. But you look at the resources that are going into the white communities. You look at the help that they're getting, and look how we're being neglected. You look at the numbers today of, out, of overdoses, and you look up near those numbers are people of color. Look at the numbers, people. It speaks for itself. Yep. Why is it that? Why is it still 40 years into this, ep this epidemic, we still fight for my community to live? That ain't right. It's a shame. It's a tragedy that every day I get up and my team get up, we have to carry 10, 12 cracks of Narcan on us to distribute in our community. But well, let's talk about getting people into treatment. Let's talk about harm reduction. That's something that most individuals are scared to talk about because it works. I'm living proof. Ten years, people, I've been doing this work when I came to harm reduction, and it changed my life. It gave me an opportunity to live. It gave me an opportunity to change the 
behaviors that I had. It also brought me back to my family. It brought me back to my kids. And it's all because of harm reduction. I practice those principles every day. People need to wake up, because this is 2021. Something needs to be done. And I'll fight this till the day I die. Thank you. Yes, Vocal New York, we believe in a people-powered democracy. That is a democracy that is not only led by the people, but prioritized by the people. Yes. yes, indeed. And for our final area on our platform, we all hear often as we hear discussions around defund the police, abolish police, there's lots of buzz around the state around alleviating incarceration. And so our third platform is around mass incarceration. And we know that mass incarceration is a civil rights issue. And so to address those civil rights issues, we have our expert lived experience. Jojo, can you come on up? With our civil rights union. Yes, yes. Good morning. My name is Jovetta Sinhouse. I am formerly incarcerated. I am a CRU union leader um, for Vocal New York. I'm also a victim of solitary confinement, a survivor. Sol solitary confinement is torture. I'm here today to thank, thank the people that helped us out to get the bill signed to end solitary, ending no more than 15 days solitary confinement is even more torture for us women. Um, we ain't finished, the job ain't finished yet. You know, I know he signed the bill, Como signed the bill to end the long-term solitary confinement, um, legalizing marijuana, we started the rights to vote for people on parole, but we still got a long way to go. We need for him to sign the bill on the 44010, which is wrongful convictions. People need to be able to fight for wrongful conviction. There's so many people that's lying up in jail, lying up in jail, that's in there for wrongful conviction. And I, actually, I'm one of them. I was one of them. You know, if I knew that back then, I wouldn't have spent so much time in there. Um, so I'm here today to ask Governor Como to please sign these bills. We really need to be signed. And um, just do, do the right thing. Do the right thing. And for vocal, if we don't get it, 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 shut it down. Thank you. 2021, time to get it done. 2021, it's 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 time. All right, so you've heard from our lived experience experts and from some of our legislative allies and partners around our Vocal New York 2021 platform. Housing, ending homelessness, Honda, HAVP. Ending the drug war, MAT in prisons and jails, and decriminalizing syringes. Ending mass incarceration, parole reform, and release our elderly from prison. Yes. 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 <laughs> yes. And now, before we close out, we are going to hear from some of our other statewide allies and representatives who could not be here in person today, but wanted to make sure that their friends and colleagues from the Senate and the Assembly will hear their demand to finish what they started. Unfinished? Business! Unfinished? Business! Woo! Come on up. <laughs> Who do we have first? Um, anybody. We have, um, we have Anna, we have Anna Kellis. Linda, we have Carmen. 
All right. I believe we have uh, Anna Kellis. Anna Kellis is our champion from uh, actually assembly member from Ithaca in Western New York. All right. Yes. Can everyone hear me? Yes. Yes, we yes. can. I am so glad that I'm making my Hold on now. I'm heartbroken. I'm not able to be there with you in person, but I want everybody to know that this legislation that we're talking about, the needle exchange being legal, MAT being rooted across the entire state in every single prison and jail solitary confinement being signed and in law and established and absolutely the housing issues that we are talking about must be included in this session we feel it across the state i yeah. want you to know that we feel it across the state there's a few things that i want to talk about that people don't know about havp we've put money into housing but putting money into housing is not enough it needs to get targeted to where the people who need it the most have. So when we talk about HABP, we need to understand if the money goes directly to the landlord or the owner, then, then this fund can include undocumented immigrants. That is so important. The fact that it prioritizes individuals and families and people with disabilities all is so important because it includes a list of people who are the most at need. It prioritizes individuals who earn less than 30% area median income. This means it prioritizes the most at need people. The fact that it prioritizes, prioritizes permanent housing for people who are currently homeless. Again, the people who most need our support. And the most important thing is it establishes equity. There is no reason why people who are middle income, people who are wealthy, are the only people who have access to a full year's lease. Why is it that low income people are forced to go month by month by month with no support, with no, with no legal grounds to protect themselves from being evicted. This bill requires a full year lease. It requires good cause eviction. Yeah. A landlord needs to have a good reason to evict someone, not just because they can get more money from someone else. Exactly. We need the housing access voucher program yeah. now, and I will fight for it with my allies. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. All right, next we are going to hear from Carmen De La Rosa. Thank you, afternoon vocal. Thank you for having us. We're sorry we couldn't be there in person, but we're here because we fully, fully support the unfinished business platform that is being supported by you all and by communities across the state here today. The legislature has a few more weeks to bring justice and dignity to the people that have been historically excluded, historically left behind by meaningful reform in our state. That includes housing reform. That includes, as you already heard, um, the needle exchange program. That means decriminalizing people who are addicted and suffering from addiction. That also means that extending criminal justice reform to not only holding police officers accountable in the street, but making sure that correction officers and mass incarceration is, um, is dismantled in New York State. It means allowing for our elders to finally be liberated, to finally see the parole board, to go before the parole board and plead their transformation in order to be finally released. We know that these are systems built on racism, systems that criminalize black and brown people across the state, systems that criminalize poverty, and communities that are disproportionately impacted by the system are communities that have not had the resources to continue to live in dignity. So we are here today because we've seen 
the atrocities of the mass incarceration system. We've seen the atrocities of unjustified and undignified housing for our people. And we will continue to fight working with Vocal and all of our allies to make sure that before session ends this year, we are able to continue to bring wins for our communities that so desperately I am here in the fight with you all, and we will continue to make sure that we are standing up and being vocal for the most vulnerable people in our communities across the state. Thank you for having me today, and I hope next time I'm able to be there in person. Thank you, Assembly Member. And the next person, our next speaker, really for Vocal, she needs no introduction. Because when you see Vocal in Albany, you see Assemblywoman Linda Rosenthal. Thank you so much. I'm so sad that I can't be there with all of you today, but I know you're fighting the good fight up there. Um, I am the sponsor of the uh, Matt in Prisons bill. I have been for years, and this is an area that has deliberately not gotten enough attention because people rape people in prison, people who use drugs on the lowest rung of society. But if anyone's ever met Terrell, for example, they know they, he's on the uppest, the highest rung of society. Love you, Terrell, and love I love you, your you fight, and I love Vocal's fight, because being addicted to drugs is not a crime. It is something that happens to people. Certainly no one asks to be addicted to heroin. It is not a great life. But we have medications that can help, harm reduction medications, and yet, there are 50 plus prisons in New York State, and maybe six of them have some access to one drug, Vivitrol. That's it. Now, we put 11, 11 um, million in the budget this year for prisons. It's a one shot, so it's not enough, but perhaps it's a little bit of realization that we need to treat substance use disorder via health care. That's a demand, that's not a request, that is a demand. Because that, that saves people's lives. And so we need to pass my bill yep. for Matt in prisons and jails across the state. It is on a correction committee agenda for tomorrow. Woo! So first we'll get it out of that. Um, but we need to ensure that anyone incarcerated in New York State can access the treatment that they deserve. Hallelujah. Just like anyone with any other medical. Battery is low. Please recharge in uh -huh. time. That's another discrimination story about people who are incarcerated. <laughs> but Matt in prison is something that is the gold standard. Matt is the treatment that anyone with a substance use issue should get according to the federal government. People in prison are no different. They don't deserve less. They Talk deserve the exact it. same thing as anyone outside prison. And so we're going to fight. We're going to fight. We're going to win this year. We have to win because people's lives are at stake. So there's a broad agenda coming up in the next six weeks. But we can do it because we believe we're together, we're strong, and it is a moral imperative to house the homeless, to do elder parole, to get people in prison, medication-assisted treatment. There's so much to do, but we can do it together. And I thank you all. Thank you. Thank you, thank you Linda. We love you. Love you. We are preparing to close. This was our Vocal New York statewide platform Woo! presented Woo! to you by our Vocal New York team, balanced with experts that are both credentialed and with a living experience. Right. Here, 
to state that there is unfinished Business. Unfinished. Business. Unfinished. Business. Now I'm going to call up to close us out our director of organizing, Jawanza Williams. Come on, people. Um, so uh, I guess what I want to say first of all, my name's Jawanza. I use he/him pronouns. And I'm director of organizing at Vocal New York. And again, we are a statewide organization with chapters in Rochester, Buffalo, Syracuse, Albany, Westchester County, and of course the five boroughs. And for 20 years, we have worked to make sure that the most vulnerable people in our state, not vulnerable by nature, but vulnerable by systems of oppression, by the consequences of systemic racism, of classism, of a state government, of city governments that refuse to prioritize the needs of black, brown, and poor people. So what we're here today to do is to remind the state of New York, the legislature, the assembly, the senate, and the governor that there is unfinished business. Now, I'm in a good mood today, so perhaps it doesn't seem as urgent as the reality is. We just ran one of the most powerful budget campaigns known to, organi to our organization. But we had to debate. We had to debate with the Senate, with the Assembly, with the Governor to end homelessness. There's 94,000 people in shelters or on the streets in this state. We had to debate with the Senate with the assembly on ending the overdose crisis for something as basic as adding medication assisted treatment inside of prisons and jails. When you incarcerate thousands of New Yorkers, you become beholden to their safety, beholden to their need to access care. We don't believe that jails and prisons are treatment centers. However, our people are in jails and prisons and they deserve access to equitable treatment that they have access to outside of those jails and prisons. And let me remind you that not everybody in jail or prison deserves any of that. In fact, no one in the jail or prison deserves to be denied medicine. So of course, we had to contend with the reality of COVID-19 and its economic devastation on our state. But that's not the issue. We were still able to pass a $212 billion budget, yet we didn't get any of the money that we needed. We were not asking for a billion dollars. We were asking for meaningful investments, a down payment to end homelessness, a down payment to end overdose. All we wanted was the housing access voucher program, not the 500 million that it will cost, but 200 million to get us started. All we wanted was the Honda program to buy struggling hotels across our state to create permanent housing. All we wanted was to decriminalize syringes, which is free. And all we wanted was to fund MAT in prisons and jails, and we didn't get that. And I'm here to remind you that the reason we didn't get that is because we are not legislating, we are not deciding our budget in a way that is anti-racist, that is class conscious, that is gender expansive. So if we want to be a democratic beacon for not just this country, but for the world, the very least we could do is finish this business. This fight is not over. We're not going to disappear. We're calling for the state that we deserve. And I promise you, if you think this is all we are, if you think that this is all who we are, I need to remind you that we did not call everybody. We didn't call everybody. And you know, honestly, the last thing I'll say to close this out, that if we are not willing to take care of those locked in chains, 
which is to ignore the history of 400 years of white supremacist anti-black terror that led to the genocide of indigenous people as we rest on this occupied land, Lenape land. What kind of place are we? What kind of people do we want to be? We have to take an accounting of where we are and remember that the crisis of homelessness that rivals that of the Great Depression, that the crisis of the overdose crisis, we're talking about thousands of people dying, hundreds probably unknown, the greatest number of overdoses in, this his in the state's history, and we don't even have accurate numbers. We don't even have the numbers from this most recent period, and we all know what happens when people overdose alone. And weren't we all told to be alone for over the last past year? So Governor Cuomo, roiled in controversy, not about homelessness, not about the overdose crisis and his, his abusive failure through policy, but about his abuse against the women around him. We're here to remind you that there's 20 million of us in this state and every single day, Governor Cuomo for the last 10 years has vastly failed all of us. Yes, he has. Yes, he has. And some of us are experiencing the worst of that situation. And those people are standing here, those that are still breathing. And we can't promise that we'll all still be here. So let's do the right thing. Let's lean on the legislature. Let's lean on, um, on the assembly and the Senate to pass these bills to make sure that this year we affirm lives. Because if we are to affirm that black lives matter, then we have to end homelessness. We have to end overdose. We have to free them all from these jails and prisons across our state. So with that, thank you. Go forth and do this work. <laughs>